what's the key to starting off a relationship well? One thing for me was, was this, that because we didn't see each other in dating environments yeah. a lot, I feel like dating environments put this pressure of being in an interview. So I compare dates to interviews. It's almost like you have to put your best foot forward. You wear your best clothes. You try and say all the best things. And even if it's not the best, actually, it's us trying to be right. And that's what we do in interviews. When you go an interview for a job, it's like you want to be the right fit. For that person. Yeah, yeah. and that's what happens in a dating scenario. Like you're sitting opposite a desk just like you do in an interview. Mm -hmm. And then someone's asking you a question and you're like, okay, well, what do I have to say to make them like me or to say the right thing? Whereas we didn't really get to do that. No. And I'm not saying that that was a conscious choice, but now when I look back at it and I reflect on it and introspect on it, I'm like, we didn't really get an opportunity no. to date in that sense. And that means that I got exposed to the real her either by seeing her in a charity organization, seeing her in a real life scenario, how does she treat normal people and then how she's with her family. And I'm like, that's the best view you can get of someone. And so when I look at that in terms of giving advice or tips or whatever, my recommendation is be around people that you're thinking about being with in an environment where they're just being themselves. Yeah. Because chances are, if you like them the way they are when they are with other people, then you're likely to love them when they're with you too. And so often we only see people that we are considering being romantic with or dating with, etc. We only see them in dates and dinners and movie nights and whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I feel like you seeing and also seeing people with the people that they're closest to because you can't really fake it with the people that you're closest to. I mean, mm. and if you can, you could do it for a really short period of time. And you also end up seeing them being probably at their worst and at their best because you can be the most loving to your family, but you can also be the worst person towards your family because they're the ones that accept it. And so, yeah, I feel like you get a good image of who the person is through, through interacting with them that way. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I, so when we first got together, I'd left being a monk probably like seven months before. So it'd been like a seven month gap. I had nothing really. Yeah. And that's a great way to start dating someone because there's very, I remember I used to save up. So I used to like try and work part time oh, yeah. and I was doing everything I could. You were so tutoring. I, I was tutoring. So yeah. I would like, I would be tutoring young people for their exams or university exams, etc. And I would, I would be making like, you know, 15 pounds an hour or whatever it was. And I remember I'd save up so I could take her out on a date at the yeah. end of the month and so that we could do something fun. And and I loved the fact, I loved that because I met her at a time when when I had nothing and she accepted me for it. Yeah. And I love her for that. And also her, her parents were always really cool about it. So sometimes that can be a big pressure from parents and expectations, but her parents were really cool about it. They never made me feel uncomfortable about it or anything. And my parents obviously were very comfortable with me. They were just like, follow your heart, do what's right for you. Very, very encouraging. And I'm, I'm not, I don't come from a well-off background at all or anything. So it's not that I had a backup plan, but my parents were still very, very encouraging and supportive. Mm.